What's up, gamers? My name is Muzzafuzza, and welcome back to some more gameplay commentary. You got a little Call of Duty Black Ops 2 uplink gameplay, but I'm not going to be talking about the gameplay. I want to jump into a topic right off the bat. Let's talk about hardcore gaming. So first of all, how many hours a day does someone have to play video games to be considered a hardcore gamer? Because some would argue that even like four hours a day makes you a hardcore gamer if you're consistent. If you play every single day four hours a day, those hours are going to add up. But other people would say, man, you're not hardcore unless you're playing 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, sometimes 14 hours a day. Because I know personally some people that have played games like, um, let's, let's just start with the crack cocaine of video games, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, Starcraft, Diablo. People who play these games are on a whole nother level. They play the game at least a few hours a day, and that's like baseline. And I'm sure, not in all cases, but with at least a few of them, you could say that these people are abusing video games. Almost as if it were a drug or, or something else. They're, they're abusing it. It could be gambling, it could be sex, it could be a drug, it could be whatever. Video games are up there too. And people do abuse video games. You, you can't be naive to that fact. But not all of them, that's what I'm saying, is not all hardcore gamers are abusing video games. I bet there's people out there who play World of Warcraft all day every day or Call of Duty all day every day, and they're, they're happy with their life, and that's why they do it, is because they really enjoy call of duty they get their kicks out of it that's why they play it all day every day and there are people with like just unhealthy uh, absurd unheard of amounts of days played on on every game you can think of call of duty or zombies or whatever if you can think of it there's at least one person who is the most hardcore gamer on that game of all time and they just lost years of their life to that game that exists that's real and it is pretty obvious the solution to all of this is that you have to strike a balance. You gotta figure out uh, work and play. You gotta separate the, the sides of your life. You gotta have a yin to your yang. You gotta know what's going on. Uh, you gotta know what's taking up too much of your time and get your priorities straight. And that's what anybody would tell you. That's the, that's the obvious answer. Um, but what, what I want to talk about specifically today is like the problems of hardcore gaming and, and the stuff that I've seen and the experiences that I've had. So. Problem number one with hardcore gaming is also fairly obvious, but it's worth talking about. Sitting in your chair all day is one of the most terrible things you can do for your health. It's up there with smoking. In fact, it's the new smoking. I actually read an article about this pretty recently in a gaming magazine, just an online article from a, from a gaming magazine Twitter that I follow, actually. And uh, they posted that sitting is the new smoking and that uh, people who spend hours a day, like upwards of four to six or more hours a day sitting in a chair, can show direct links, direct correlations to health problems. And these problems are like circulation issues, uh, back problems, blood clots, uh, I don't mean to get gross, but hemorrhoids, fistulas, like nasty, nasty shit. And these problems are a lot worse if you're already overweight and unhealthy in the first place. And I actually take care of my health. I at least try. I was raised healthy. I, I, I was raised on organic food and exercise and getting outside on, on the regular. So I feel like I have a, a much better grasp than I would say most hardcore gamers do on the issue. And that's why I feel like this is something that I can talk about and try to promote positivity in. Because people do just lose themselves in video games. And when you lose yourself that much, you start to lose your health. You start to lose your friends you start to lose your free time you start to lose your passion and your motivation for things and I've seen that countless times in, in all sorts of people including myself and I'm not gonna leave myself out of this and I don't really want to dote on my problems too long because it's like you know the internet nobody wants to hear you talk about your problems so I'll keep this brief but I have lost myself in a few different video games I played RuneScape hardcore for a while and that went straight to World of Warcraft and that went straight to console games and I've been playing games my whole life so gaming is something that I have had problems with just like anything else that can be problematic whether you're into sports or gambling or whatever it is like everything in excess of anything can be bad for you. And at this point, you might ask me, like, Muzzafuzza, all this is well and good, but why? Like, why would you make a video like this talking about this kind of stuff? This is kind of not the stuff that most commentators would bring up. This is not something that you would hear in a gameplay commentary from most people. And I think that's the reason that it's worth talking about, is because, like, people don't think about this kind of stuff enough. And if I can just change one person's life, even just one, from doing a video like this, then it's automatically worth it. Because I think people should be working on improving their lives. Self-improvement is something that everybody should be working on constantly and that's what makes the world better that's what makes us better as people and yeah I don't want to sound too preachy but it's worth it I can only show you guys the doors it's up to you to walk through them thanks for watching